Uh, we were very happy to receive the invitation. Uh, particularly, uh, we were surprised that it, it came from the office of Herzog and Meron, and that lent it a uh, special kind of legitimacy for us. Uh, we, maybe otherwise, we would have been suspicious, you know. We did not consider to reject the invitation. Of course, uh, we have been surprised a little bit by the um, discussions about that. We think that. Uh, this kind of uh, rebellious attitude in this particular case is a little bit out of place. You know, every architect, uh, practicing architect, um, knows that there's no such thing as uh, perfect commissions, perfect clients, perfect sites. And I think the challenge of adjusting a, an idea uh, to the reality, the messy reality of actual construction is uh, part of the challenge of uh, accepting the project. Uh, obviously, as long as uh, uh, the professional integrity of the architect or other professionals involved or uh, the integrity of the work is not compromised, uh, which in this particular case we don't see, we don't see that that will be uh, the situation that we'll encounter, uh, we, we uh, think that we should participate and we haven't considered withdrawing. Um, in relationship to the project having to be seen in the context of this work, I think uh, absolutely it does. Um, but I think that uh, idea needs to be qualified a little bit because uh, although his uh, way way besides being a conceptual artist is also a an architect or works as an architect I think the to me at least the flavor of his architecture is different than the flavor of his art I think I think it, he has a, a different attitude towards art that he has for, uh, towards architecture and I think that uh, the articulation, I would say, of this project into his body of work, although his body of work includes both architecture and art, uh, creates a kind of anomaly in that body of work. Well, it wouldn't have been so much of a problem if it had been an abstract client. I think that um, I think designing uh, residences for abstract clients is done all the time. As a matter of thing, most of the things that are designed are designed for abstract clients. Uh, from the point of view of our work, uh, we have done a lot of uh, theoretical projects and competitions that have basically been designed for uh, abstract clients. As a matter of fact, when you do a competition, you don't have enough time or information to get to know your client, even is sometimes against the rules of the competition, to try to acquire more information or ask any questions beyond the ones that are stipulated by the rules. So designing for an abstract client, I think, is done all the time. I have to say that uh, we designed the house with uh, thinking of no particularly Chinese construction methods. Uh, our house is designed with clay brick masonry, which perhaps is, you know, the oldest construction technique in the planet. And um, the surface, though, are rendered uh, with cementitious uh, stucco on the outside, cobalt blue cementitious stucco on the outside, and white plaster on the inside. Uh, in order to abstract the tectonics of brick, right? in order to point from the experience of extension of the surface towards uh, the concept that generates the form. No? So, but we haven't, we haven't thought about particularly Chinese ways of building or traditionally Chinese ways of building, although brick is traditionally a Chinese way of building, that's not why we chose it.
I think for the purposes of answering the question, we should say that there were three issues uh, that we addressed uh, during the design of the process, three main issues that we addressed. Uh, one was the uh, indivisibility of interior space and exterior space. The other one was we call capture distance, which became the name of our project. Uh, and the third one was uh, polyhedral space versus curved space. So those were, you know, three points, I guess, that is convenient to talk about now as a kind of points of articulation of the idea. We feel really good, I mean, particularly because we're done with all those drawings that we were supposed to do in four months and we had to do in two months. Uh, we feel we feel very happy about the result, uh, jokes aside. But um, we also feel a little bit anxious, you know, because we had to see the drawings um, be sent away to a, a Chinese design institute, you know, by law in China. Drawings for construction need to be designed, need to be drawn by a governmental institution, basically. And it is just not clear to us how much control we have over the rest of the process, you know, either the process of documentation for construction or construction itself. Um, we did try to plan for that in a way during design. You know, we, uh, we thought of building something that was very easy, designing something that was very easy to build. Um, and I have to say that wasn't difficult, you know, because we didn't see we didn't see the work as some kind of uh, demonstration of the latest either design or construction techniques. You know, it is didn't have to be didactic in that way. So, you know, we plan for it by trying to make it really, really easy, simple to build. This is another topic I think that has brought a lot of attention and criticism and, and in a way we, uh, I think it needs to be recognized that this is a, a special situation, you know, uh, or if you want, you know, if you want to be optimistic and think that the project would be built properly and turn out great, a very optimistic point of view. You know? I think the site is something very different uh, from what we would do if we had to design uh, a master plan for this project. But I think that's precisely the point, you know. Uh, the, the establishment of that difference is precisely the point. You know, from our point of view, the site is a little bit strange, you know. Uh, is a, it, it, the definition of public space is a little bit terse, you know. Uh, and the feeling of the whole thing seems to be stuck somewhere between the urban and the suburban. Uh, but I think the site needs to be seen as some kind of armature uh, for dissent and difference of opinion, you know, for a, a kind of uh, urban context for allowing difference, you know, for the appreciation of the other, if you like. And in that sense, the project is very unique. Um, you know, it occurred to me that thinking about the somewhat unsettling display of synchronized uh, um, behavior, synchronized obedience that was the sort of uh, Beijing Olympics opening ceremony, there's nothing that would be better for China right now than freedom, dissent, and difference of opinion. So the project might be very appropriate in that sense. Why not? I mean, I think that, um, you know, since the French Revolution, uh, freedom, dissent, and difference of opinion is supposedly applicable all over the world. We're still working on it, right? But, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, um, could you imagine what happened if our leading artists were to uh, be responsible for the main decisions on some of the uh, more important, or at least more visible, uh, housing projects in the United States. You know, we were uh, fantasizing about this. Actually, you know, what what would happen if if uh, 
Dan Graham and Bruce Nauman and Chris Burton were to have their own projects and commission architects from all over the world to conceive of them and execute them. I think that would be better than uh, one more uh, sort of split ranch development that would deface the countryside or another, you know, Donald Trump monstrosity to mangle a downtown with a uh, display of bad taste and banality. You know? I don't think it does. I mean, as I was, um, as I was saying earlier, I think the um, the project, from the point of view of urban design, became a kind of collage of voices. You know, it it was very difficult uh, uh, to arrive at a kind of common ground other than the one that had been established by Wei Wei, which was one of you know respect for the site plan and then absolute freedom. Besides that, right? So if plan as a minimum armature and then complete freedom. So I think you know, from the point of view of uh, uh, of the scope for every individual architect, we all, each one of us, being responsible for a very very small part of the project. You know, it's really a uh, it's really a, a, an exquisite corpse kind of project. You know. Well, if you ask about commission instead of asking about project, I think that involves um, a consideration of who the client shall be, right? Um, and I think that, in a way, um, architects, when they think about the ideal commission, think who the ideal client should be. In that sense, it, I think this is something good to consider for this particular project because, you know, obviously um, the project is a is a project that the client expects to be uh, successful as a as a development proposition, and we hope so too. Uh, but I think the, the clients also take it unprecedented risks by, you know, hiring a hundred young architects, some of which don't even have one single building to their name and, and allowing them to do whatever they want. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a passage in um, Salambo where Flaubert describes uh, why uh, Carthay cannot aspire to true greatness as a city, unlike Rome. Uh, and it says that uh, what's, what stands between Carthage and true greatness is obsession with the bottom line, you know. So I think, you know, to a, certain, to a certain extent, I think that the client that we would search for will be a Roman and not a Carthaginian. You know? <laughs>